Hello guys, uh, welcome to second part of uh, Spring Boot screencast series. This is about me. And in this session, we will take a look at what Spring Boot Fragile is, how to build it. And we will uh, take a look at how we can use uh, different uh, solid containers like Tomcat, GT or Undertow. And finally, we will uh, take a look at how we can develop Spring Boot application as a traditional WAR files and uh, we can deploy it as on, uh, on uh, solid containers uh, like Tomcat that are set up externally instead of packaging uh, Tomcat as an embedded container. Okay, so here uh, I am creating a new Spring Boot application by going to File, New, Spring Starter Project and I'm leaving all these to defaults and selecting web starter and finish. And then take a look at, uh, at the palm.xml. Here it's a packaging of type jar and then we are using 1.2.4 release. 1.8 version and we have uh, starter dependencies for uh, web and test and let us open our entry point class demo application and if you okay let's uh, simply add one static index start html resource that's html and body and S2, welcome to Spring Boot Part 2. Okay, there you go. Now I'm running this application as it's our application. Now it will start the embedded Tomcat container and runs on port 8080. So now you can see it is started on Tomcat port 880, but we did not specify which server to use. But based on the conventions or opinionated approach, if you go to this dependency hierarchy, you can see when you add Spring Boot Starter Web, it pulls Spring Boot Starter Tomcat by default. That means Spring Boot assuming when you are developing web application, you might want to use starter tomcat that's why it is uh, packaging uh, starter tomcat dependencies and which provides all the tomcat embedded container uh, libraries here so if you want to use any other uh, containers like jetty you should uh, exclude this dependency and add whatever the starter um, servlet container like JTR under two, you need to add that one. But before that, let's do one check how we can uh, run this application in uh, production mode. Now we, are, we have this nice ID where you can simply right click and run as a Java application, but uh, obviously this is not how we run applications in production mode. So what will we give it to production team and how they can run this as an application because we are using a packaging of jar type, we will get a jar artifact and how uh, we can run this application. Okay, now let's uh, go to this demo application, which is there in temp directory demo. Now I am going into demo directory and then uh, I will list out the contents here. Okay, we are at the root of the project. Now I am running Maven clean, which will delete the target directory. So now we don't have target here. And then I am running package go. So this will build the jar file, which we call fat jar. Let's see what it contains. It's running test and then yes, it's build success and then 
Now, if you take a look at there are two jar piles. One is original and another one is the jar which is fat jar. You can make it out looking at the sizes. So, this original jar file is containing only the code that we wrote in our application code. That means we have application and properties, we have static content, and we have a demo package and a demo application class which, which we wrote. But if you take a look at this snapshot jar, this contains few more things. In addition to static application context, application and properties, demo. In addition to those, uh, we have a lib folder which contains all the application dependencies that are packaged. You can see this Tomcat dependencies, Spring Boot dependencies, Spring dependencies, all other things. So this is how it becomes a self-contained application. Like you don't need to deploy this on an external servlet container. All the things that are required to run this application are already packaged in this jar file itself. And there are uh, a few uh, Spring Boot uh, classes which do all the magic to run the container, all these things. So now we can simply give this jar file pad jar to production team and they can simply run application using java minus jar command. Let's go into our target directory and here we have a jar file. Now we can simply run java minus jar and demo this thing. Now this runs, uh, this starts the embedded Tomcat container and run it on 4080. See, it runs on 4080, it started Tomcat. So now if you go to uh, local host 80, you can see this application is running. So this is what uh, Spring Boot Fatcher is, where it contains all the runtime container embedded within the jar file itself. You don't need to deploy it on any external container. Okay, <clears throat> so now we'll uh, take a look at how we can use uh, different kinds of uh, certain containers like JTR, 100 to instead of uh, default Tomcat, okay? So when you go to this dependency hierarchy, we saw how we are getting this uh, Tomcat. That is the default thing that got added. So what we can do is if you want to use any other container like JT, exclude this one, exclude my own artifact. And go to palm.xml here. Now here you can see this transitive dependency is excluded. Now what we need to do, we need to add the dependency to whatever the container we want to use. Okay, and now I want to use JT instead of uh, Tomcat. Okay, I excluded Tomcat dependency and then included JT dependency here. Now if you go and see this, here you can see all the JT dependencies. There are no Tomcat dependencies now. Okay, now let's start the application. You can see in the console like uh, we are using JT started on 4080. Now we are using JT instead of uh, Tomcat. Or you may want to use uh, Undertow instead of JT. Undertow is a newly developed uh, servlet container which is part of Wildfly server. If you want to use Undertow, you can simply add the starter dependency to Undertow and, and just run the application as usual. Now we should see we are using Tom, um, Undertow here. You can see Undertow started on 4080. See, see, this is how simple it is to use different kinds of servlet containers here. And the advantage is uh, like if you are directly working on uh, some externally set up servlet uh, containers, uh, when you want to uh, change the default configuration, for example, we want to run uh, maybe on port 9090. 
if it is tomcat you may need to go to some conf directory there in servlet.xml and change the port number to 9090 but the same process will be uh, totally different in um, jetty it may have a different configuration file and there will be a different uh, kind of approach to change the defaults but if you are using this uh, spring boot approach it is you can do all these things in a unified way like you can come here in application or properties you change the properties to whatever you want so this is how simple it is to use various types of uh, uh, servlet containers okay all right now let us uh, take a look at how we can um, build spring boot application as a traditional var file and apply it on externally uh, set up tomcat container okay for that before going to that uh, let us do few things like I'm changing it back to Tomcat and I'm adding the scope as provided because we don't need to package uh, Tomcat embedded uh, container dependencies because we are uh, deploying an externally set up server. We added the starter Tomcat with the provided scope so that it, these dependency libraries won't be packaged in our application and then uh, we are excluding this Tomcat here okay so and then we have to change this packaging type to var file now see earlier uh, when you are packaging as a jar file you will put all your uh, view web content inside the src main resources static or public now you should put all of them into src main web app based on the Maven convention web app. So now I am moving this index.html to web app and let me change it to R. Okay. Okay. So let me refresh this, update this Maven project. Now, okay, it converted into web module. Now I have a server configured uh, that is Tomcat 8 and I am running this application. So now you can see the application is deployed on um, servlet container and then it is running and you can see the default context will uh, become based on the project uh, name here so this is how we can um, develop spring boot application as a var file and you might ask why do we need to develop as a var type because spring boot supports various types of um, view templates like uh, time leaf mustache groovy templates all these things which you can use uh, as a jar type packaging but if you have to use or if you want to use uh, jsps as your view templates jsps doesn't support it if you are using jar type package you have to uh, build your application as a var type only so that could be one reason why you want to go with the traditional work kind of approach if you want to uh, use jsps only okay Yep, that's all uh, for this uh, session. I think um, you you got an idea on how to use different uh, servlet containers. And keep watching uh, for the next screencast parts. Okay, thank you. Bye.